Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to a, another video. Now today I have a bit of an interesting video. So, we, as you can tell by the title, we're going to be doing a comparison in this video. So we're going to be comparing an official Xbox One controller, as we have right here, against a third party controller. And we're going to see which one of these would be best. So, let's get into the video. So, let's start off with the normal Xbox One controller. Now, the now it can be used on Xbox One, PC, Android, and I think it can be used on iOS, I'm not sure. But, anyways, it's a very standard controller. This design's been around for a few years now, so... It feels pretty comfortable in the hand. I don't know if it's as comfortable as the um, PlayStation 4 DualShock 4, but... For most people, this will be a pretty comfortable controller. On the other hand, with this controller, which I forgot to mention, this is a um, PDP Xbox One controller. Um, the compatibility, it only works on Xbox One and PC because it has to be wired. So, we'll get into the feature set in a minute. But in terms of comfort, um, it's not as pleasing. As you can see on the grips here, it has... Um, sort of sharp edges here and the triggers are very flat so it's not the most pleasing experience in the world if i had to pick comfort between these two it would definitely be the xbox one controller now let's go on to feature set so the feature set with the xbox one controller is that it has compatibility for xbox one windows 10 Android and iOS. I'm not sure about iOS. Let me know in the comments below if you know So In terms of inputs you have I think that's a proprietary um, Xbox Higgs Xbox headset port not sure about that and you also do get a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack to plug in your own headset or headphones and game also on the top here you have a micro USB port and a pair slash sync button so this so when you hold this down, it will enter pairing mode when you've turned on the controller using the Xbox button. And also behind here, this is not the original, if I can get this on, off. This is not actually the original cover. I'll find the original cover in a second. But I do have a rechargeable battery in here. I think the, rem the normal cover is over here somewhere. Um, it's in one of these box. Okay, I'm not sure where it is, but it's pretty much just the same color as... There, so with this, when you get an Xbox One controller, it will ship with AA batteries, but you can cheaply buy um, rechargeable ones and the dock, like I did, for about uh, $35, $40, I'm not sure how much it costs, or you could get the official Xbox Plane charge kit for about 40 bucks. So, that's pretty much all we have to um, do. That's pretty much all there is to it. It has uh, Bluetooth, so it's... Um, Easier to connect to other devices. I cannot get this cover on. There we go. And that's pretty much the feature set of this. That took a little bit longer than I thought it would. Now going on to the PDP controller, it's the same thing. It has to be wired. So on the top here, you can see there's a, a micro USB port kind of covered. Now it has this ring around it, meaning you can only use the micro USB port that comes with the controller. And it is a very long cord, so don't worry. And also, this controller is considerably lighter than this one, largely because this has a battery in it, and this one doesn't. Also, on the bottom, you only have that singular 3.5mm headphone jack. You don't have that other um, Xbox port. But there is an extra feature on this, which is kind of confusing to me, and that's this button right here. Now, from... And also on the D-pad, as you might be able to see, there's some little engravings, if it goes in focus. So, you can hold this button, and you can raise your game audio. I think you can... So, if you want to turn up your game audio, you press this and then go up or down. But if you want to, pre if you want to turn up your chat audio, while holding this, by the way, you do that, and then raise it or up. And then a double tap will actually mute it. So that's some cool um, headset controls on the controller itself, so I definitely do like that. So, in terms of features, um, it's 
gonna be a tie, I think. This has some really cool uh, technical features, whereas this is just a straight up wireless controller or Bluetooth controller. So if I had to pick one, I'd probably go with, um, well, if I had to pick one that would benefit most people, I'd definitely go with the normal Xbox One controller. Um, next category, I guess, is going to be, uh, the feel of each button, or the feel of the button. So, um, this one, the normal Xbox One controller, is pretty good. It has some nice feeling buttons, so I'll just let you have a listen. So, as you can see, the buttons are very clicky, and I do quite like them. The D-pad itself is very clicky, which I don't actually... I, I wasn't a big fan of it at first, but I actually don't mind it that much. And, of course, if you hold this, the Xbox logo will blink like that. Now, let's go on to the PDP controller. Now, this is um a bit cheaper. I'll explain pricing at the end of the video, but... The buttons on here don't feel quite as nice. Of course, mileage may vary, but I'll just let you have a listen. And that's pretty much um, that for this controller. Now, this Xbox logo in the middle does not light up. In fact, it actually has a little uh, translucent area up here. If I can get this in focus, the audio focus on this can be really trash. But, um, here will light up when it's plugged in. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty good. And this, oh, whoops. And this Xbox controller is still flashing. So, in terms of feel of the buttons, I'm definitely gonna go with the normal Xbox One controller again. Now, let's talk about um, prices. So, the price for this, um, for a normal Xbox One controller for in, here in New Zealand, they retail for $100 to get a standard color. If you want to get one like this um, grey and blue, that which I got, which I really like, this will be 110 and if you want to get some special edition versions, it's going to be 120 or upwards, and there's also the Elite controller, which is like 220 bucks, so, yeah, there's that. Also, um, this controller here is about 69 to $70, and they usually go, and this one usually goes on sale quite a bit, and you can get them in a few different colors, I believe you can get it in white, red, purple, green, or blue. Now, that's also one of the advantages of the official Xbox One controller, is that it comes in a variety of colors, special editions. There's got to be, like, over 50 of them by now. And if you want to spend 150 I'm not sure how much it is, you can get a Design Lab controller. Now, the Design Lab controller, which I'll leave the site in the description, basically what it does, it allows you to customize the, um, the color of your controller. Um, you can add rubberized grips on the back, and it's pretty cool. So... Definitely in color choices, we're definitely going this one. Now, which one of these would I recommend? Now, if you're playing on PC and Xbox, just that, um, the PDP controller is actually um, pretty good. So, it is hardlined, unfortunately. That's probably one of the downsides. And the build quality, it's alright. So, that's probably... So, it does have some downsides, but if you're trying to save a bit of cash... This is not a bad way of going. If you're playing on phone, if you're playing on Xbox One, PC, or if you decide to play with phones at one point, uh, just say you feel like playing Minecraft on your phone with a controller, the Xbox One S controller is definitely going to be the way to go because this doesn't have Bluetooth, whereas this one does. So, deciding between the two of which one would actually benefit, I think we've all assumed at the end that this is the obvious winner. So. It has wireless capabilities, it's got the better feeling buttons, better grips, but if you are tight on cash, this is definitely 
a good way of going. And like I said, if you're only buying a controller for playing on PC, which is what I got this controller for when I first got it, this is a good way of going. But if you do want to play on your phone or you just... Or if you want to play on your phone with a controller like I did, this is definitely the way to go. So, that's going to be the review summarizing these two controllers. They're both very good. There's also other third-party um, options available. But, this is going to be it for today's video. So, if you guys did enjoy, remember to hit that thumbs up button or subscribe. And, we'll catch you guys for the next video coming out whenever. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.